Okay, we talked about infective lung disease, we talked about obstructive lung disease, and now the last um, category basically of lung disease is restrictive lung disease. So when we were talking about um, cardiac disease, we kind of had four categories, um, vascular, valvular, electrophysiological, cardiomyopathy. With lung disease, it's infective, obstructive, or restrictive. So hopefully that helps kind of categorize and boil things down a little bit. So this will be um, hopefully short. <laughs> the last two objectives. Um, so upper respiratory infections, that was in the infective lung disease. Um, bacterial infections, same thing. Pneumonia in infective or obstructive for aspiration pneumonia. Um, aspiration, well, you know, it can block everything and make it difficult to actually breathe. Um, we talked about asthma in the um, obstructive and emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So um, now we're going to talk about restrictive lung disease, and that's the last two learning objectives. So the causes of pulmonary edema and how it affects oxygen levels. I think you can guess how it affects oxygen levels just based on your knowledge. Um, describe the causes of um, atelectasis and the resulting effects on ventilation and oxygen levels. So restrictive lung diseases, as you can probably figure out from these two learning objectives, they affect oxygen levels. <laughs> so it makes sense. If your lungs are restricted for whatever reason, you can't get in enough oxygen. So the restrictive lung diseases are a group of disorders with impaired lung expansion and reduced total lung capacity. So the first group is an abnormality of the chest wall that limits or impairs lung expansion. So if you have kyphosis or scoliosis that is severe enough that it's restricting lung expansion, um, poliomyelitis, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and those two affect um, lung expansion because of their effect on muscles. Um, botulism also because of their effect on the contraction of muscles and muscular dystrophy. So those cause um, impaired lung expansion because of effect on um, the cell, the chest wall or the muscles of the chest wall that impair or limit lung expansion. Um, the second group are diseases affecting the supporting framework of the lungs. So pulmonary fibrosis or occupational diseases, they call them like asbestosis and um, other like working in a coal mine diseases. So we'll talk about those. So the, um, the pneumoconioses are um, the occupational um, things. Uh, they're basically you get junk in your lungs that keep, keeps it from expanding. <laughs> if you wanna think of it that way. So coal, coal workers get coal dust in their lungs. It occurs in coal mines. There you go. Silicosis, it gets silica in their lungs and it um, occurs in stone cuttings and sand blasting and mines. So stone mines. Um, asbestosis, uh, you get asbestos in your lungs and it, it occurs in insulation and shipbuilding operations. Um, farmer's lung is caused by fungal spores that live in hay. So farmers have hay and they, they can um, get exposed to those fungal spores that um, gunk up their lungs, basically. So when you have, when you have this stuff in your lungs, um, basically it fills up some of your alveoli and it, it's almost like cement, so they can't expand. Um, and it just, it restricts them from expanding enough to exchange oxygen. So pulmonary edema is where you have fluid collecting in the alveoli and in the interstitial area. Um, so it can result from different primary conditions like pneumonia and aspiration and some other different ones. It reduces the amount of oxygen diffusing into blood and it interferes with lung expansion. That's why it, um, it's considered a restrictive lung disease because it interferes with lung expansion when you have the buildup of fluid in the alveoli. Um, the signs and symptoms are cough, um, orthopnea, which is um, you lie down and you feel. So remember when we talked about pulmonary edema with um, heart failure, with left-sided heart failure, um, that is 
uh, you get orthopnea with that as well. So fluid in your lungs. Um, hemoptysis, uh, rails, um, rails is the sound of the fluid glugging back and forth in your lungs, basically. Um, hemoptysis, coughing up blood, a lot of stuff in the lungs causes that. And frothy blood tinge sputum. Remember the pulmonary edema from left-sided heart failure also caused those same signs and symptoms. So left-sided heart failure can be the cause of this. Um, other things can can cause it too, like pneumonia and aspiration, that sort of thing. Um, a pulmonary embolus is a blood clot or mass that obstructs pulmonary artery or any of its branches. Um, the effect of the embolus depends on what it's made out of, how big it is, and where it's located. So small pu pulmonary emboli might be silent unless they involve a large area of the lung. So you could have like a little area blocked off and you still have a lot of the rest of the lung working for you. A large embolus can cause sudden death. 90% um, of pulmonary emboli originate from deep vein thromboses in the legs and they are preventable. So this is one of the things when we're working with people post-surgically in um, physical therapy, this is one of the things that we need to be aware of. Like someone could potentially have a deep vein thrombosis and they, it could potentially become a pulmonary embolus. So an embolus is basically a thrombus that breaks off and goes to someplace else like the lungs. Um, so, and they're preventable and they're screenable. So if you suspect something, um, one time we um, had someone in our clinic post-surgically and um, the only symptom that he really had is he had slightly elevated blood pressure and his wife said he was just not right. There was something wrong with him. <laughs> um, so um, we sent him to their doctor's office and they screened and he had a pulmonary embolus and they used um, anti-clotting drugs to treat it. So it's treatable, it's preventable um, with blood thinners and um, other prevention um, measures. Um, so it's something that you should just be aware of when you have people post-surgically, they could potentially have a DVT and they that could potentially become a pulmonary embolus. So um, listen to people when they say something's not right <laughs> or when their blood pressure is weird. Like you took their blood pressure and it was fine. And then you took it again a, a few days later or the next week and it was weird. So just look for weird signs. That's why we've been taking all these blood pressures in class. That's why. So atelectasis is the non-aeration or collapse of a lung or part of a lung that leads to decreased gas exchange and hypoxia. So it's like your little alveoli have to be open in order to have that gas exchange. And if they're if they collapse and the edges stick to each other, they can't they can't open and get oxygen in there. So uh, the alveoli, once they collapse, they become airless and um, you get inflammation and or atrophy of the alveoli. So it, interfe it interferes with the blood flow through the lung. Cause remember the alveolus is, um, has got capillaries right around it um, to, for that um, gas exchange. And so it, um, affects ventilation and perfusion and it affects oxygen diffusion. So um, if you, if all of that is messed up, then you're not getting enough oxygen. Um, mechanisms, there are lots of different mechanisms that can result in atelectasis. Um, obstructive or resorption atelectasis is call, caused by total obstruction of the airway. So the airway is obstructed and the alveoli just collapse because they don't have any um, input, basically, any oxygen coming in, any air coming in. Um, compression atelectasis is where something else presses on the um, alveoli. So a mass or a tumor. Um, so if you have lung cancer, that can um, compress your alveoli. That's never good. Um, increased surface tension in the alveoli prevents expansion of the lung because it's like the grocery bag that sticks together and you can't open it up. You can't just go in there and open your alveoli. <laughs> the produce bag is what I'm talking about. Um, so there's increased surface tension um, that prevents expansion of the lung. 
Fibrotic tissue in the lungs or pleura can um, restrict expansion and lead to alveolar collapse. Um, Post-operative anaphylaxis may occur after surgery, and it's because of changes in ventilation. So um, basically the alveoli, they're the business end of the lung. <laughs> That's where it all happens. That's where the gas exchange happens with the capillaries. So if your alveoli are collapsed, you are not getting enough oxygen. You're going to get decreased oxygen diffusion, and it's going to lead to, to hypoxia. Um, which, of course, can lead to shock because you have inadequate perfusion of oxygenated blood. And that can lead to, you know, heart failure and death and all those other terrific things. Acute respiratory failure. They can also lead to, uh, atelaxis can also lead to acute respiratory failure. Um, it can result from lots of things, acute or chronic disorders. Emphysema can cause acute respiratory failure. Um, a combination of chronic and acute disorders, um, acute respiratory disorders, like um, status asthmaticus, for example. Um, many neuromuscular diseases can result in acute respiratory failure, like Guillain-Barre um, syndrome and um, ALS, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Um, they can result in acute respiratory failure. The signs... Um, can be masked or altered by the primary problem. So if you have emphysema, you probably have difficulty breathing anyway, you have dyspnea. And so that could mask the fact that you're in acute respiratory failure. In order to be treated, you have to resolve the primary problem. Um, and sometimes you need supportive treatment to maintain respiratory function. So um, a small percentage of people with Guillain-Barre disease have to be on a ventilator in the acute stage to maintain their respiratory function. Um, and um, some, a lot of people with ALS end up having to be on a ventilator at the end of their life um, because of acute respiratory failure. So um, that supportive treatment, sometimes it's going to get you to the next stage. Sometimes it's just going to give you a little more time. So um, acute respiratory failure is extremely serious. That could be on the list, be on the top 10 list.